Hey guys, Brad from simpleguitar.com. Now, should you buy a really good guitar or a really good amp? Guitar players always wanna buy a new guitar, but if you don't have a good amp, I highly recommend that you get one, okay? Now, I just had a student who in the last year has probably gotten three new guitars. And just the other day in class, he was like, I gotta get this other guitar. And I get it. I just saw the Dave Grohl signature guitar come out. I want to get a new guitar too. But with this particular student, I was like, dude, you don't even have an amp. Get a good amp, right? And the reason for that is because a really good amp can make a bad guitar sound pretty good. But a really good guitar on a bad amp is going to sound like crap, okay? So it's worth it for you to invest in a good amp. On top of that, you can use multiple guitars through the same amp. So if you have a really good amp, it's not gonna matter what guitar you get down the road. You're gonna have a good platform for all those guitars to be used through and it's gonna sound way better. So what kind of amp should you get? Part of that is going to depend on what kind of music you're playing, what style you're playing, who your favorite artists are, what kind of sound you want to get. But we live in a world of technology. There are guys getting fantastic tones with plugins on their computer and that is it. You can get simple combo amps, you can get solid state amps, you can get tube amps, you can get digital amps, you can get modeling and profiling amps like my Kemper right here, this is a profiling amp. And honestly, in the world of today's technology, it is getting harder and harder and harder to distinguish the difference between a true tube amp and a quote unquote imitation, right? So really you can't go wrong, but get something that sounds good. For example, I'd never had a professional level amplifier for years. Um, and about five years ago, I got this Kemper and I love it. Now what I've got right now, <laughs> plugged in right here. This is running straight through this Marshall cabinet. So that is what you are hearing. But this thing takes profiles of many, many different amplifiers and you can build those profiles. There are people who do profiles of amps and sell them and you can buy profiles of amps and there's a community where you just put them up for free and you can get all sorts of great sounding profiles of multi thousand dollar amplifiers. For example, I did some recording with my band one time and we did almost every single track that we recorded through a Mesa Boogie Mark V amp. I've never had the three grand that I wanted to dish out for a Mesa Boogie Mark V. Actually, now I probably want the Mark VII, but I digress. But when I got this, I downloaded a profile of the Mesa Boogie Mark V amp for free. And now I have it and it sounds awesome and I can use it whenever I want. I also have different marshals. This one is a Vox actually. So for this profile, this is a Vox AC15, AC30, one of those. It's a great sounding amp and it sounds awesome clean. And then if I dig in a little bit, there's a little touch of gain on this, but if I dig in, I get has just a touch of grit to it, right? But let's try another one. Let me show you another one. All right, this one is probably one of my favorite ones because I'm a huge Green Day fan. Um, and Billy Joe Armstrong from Green Day plays a modified Marshall uh, amplifier and it was modified by this dude named Martin Golub, okay? Now I went searching online. I said, hey, does anybody have a profile of a Martin Golub modified Marshall? And I found out I was not the only one looking because people had already put up on the community a Martin Golub 1971 Marshall amp. And so I downloaded that and now, it sounds like Green Day, man. It's so cool. The little kid in me that was like 10 years old when I discovered Green Day is like freaking out because uh, it sounds so good. And I use this sound all the time, but here's the beauty of this. This is a nice distorted. There's no pedals on that. That is the sound of the amplifier, okay? And that's how it should go. You should be able to get a good amp that sounds good distorted or clean. This is how this sounds distorted, just. 
But here's the cool thing. If I turn down my volume, or even if I play lightly, this being a digital profiling amp, it still behaves like, like a tube amp, right? If I'm light, it goes lighter. The problem with modelers when they first came out was it didn't matter how you played, you just got what you got, but this behaves like a tube amp. It's just, I, I love it. I think it's awesome. So I've got like two or 300 amps on here. I have not bought any new ones. I just download the free ones and I use the ones that are in there. You can get everything, right? But when I bought this, this was a big investment. Uh, it was close to three grand. But I figured it's better to get this and be able to have any amp at my fingertips than to just buy a Mesa Boogie Mark V, which a Mesa Boogie Mark V is a fantastic stinking amp, okay? I would still love to have one of those. But this is a great avenue to go. Now, do you have to get a Kemper? No. If I were buying one today, I'd probably buy the Kemper Stage, which has all of this in the floor pedal version. So it just sits on the stage at your feet, okay? This one is the power amp version, so it's powering the speaker and everything. Uh, it's I like this one a lot, but it was expensive and they hadn't come out with the Kemper Stage yet. But does it matter if you get that or an Axe FX or a Line 6 Helix or a Neural Quad Cortex? No, it doesn't matter. I mean, dude, everything has advanced so far nowadays. Nobody is going to be listening to a record of you playing and hear you in the mix with the drums and the bass and the vocals and everything and go, oh yeah, he's totally playing a quad cortex and instead of playing through a Kemper, or, it's not gonna happen. Nobody's even gonna know that you're playing a profiler or a modeler or whatever because the things have just gotten so stinking good nowadays, nobody can tell. But that is not to say that getting a good amp means that you gotta break the bank. Let me show you this other cool little amp that I found recently. Okay, check this out. This is a Monoprice Stage Right, and this is a one by 12 tube amp, okay? Now, quick note, I am not sponsored or endorsed by Kemper, by Monoprice Stage Right, nothing. This is just stuff that I actually have bought and use. Same thing with that guitar. That guitar that I'm playing, it's an e-art guitar off of Amazon, and I got it because I've had students buying those and they're just great sounding guitars that will not, will not break the bank, right? So with this amp, I bought this originally for my son. He's 13 now. He's been really loving guitar and he wanted an amp and being who I am, I'm like, we got to get this kid a, a, a tube amp because um, I just think that would be awesome as a kid to have a good tube amp that's going to last him for quite a while. So we bought him this and I bought him this because this amp is comparable to a Fender Blues Junior amp, which a Blues Junior will run you six or 700 bucks, right? It's a one by 12, but check this out. This has your gain and volume, okay? So your gain is like your sensitivity. The higher the gain, the more breakup you're gonna get, the more distortion you're gonna get. The lower gain, the cleaner the signal you're gonna get. And then your volume is just, you know, the, the ceiling on how loud you want that to be. So you can crank up your gain and turn down your volume and play heavy distorted sounds at a low volume without killing your ears. There's also a tone, which tone, tone knobs are basically a high frequency pass filter. So they allow higher frequencies to pass through so that it sounds brighter or cleaner. And the more that you turn down the tone, the less high frequencies that pass through and it sounds darker. Okay, we can talk about that more another day. There's a three band EQ, bass, metal, bass, middle, treble, and there's also a built in reverb in this. Okay, uh, now the cool thing about this I really like is there's this button right here that my four year old took the button actually out. So I have to like stick a pen in there and push it now, but it switches between 15 watts and one watt. So I usually leave this just pressed on one watt because we're using this in guitar classes. We don't want to just blow everybody's ears out, right? Um, but at 15 watts, it sounds great. I like it. It sounds awesome. Now, here's the other cool thing about this. If I flip this around back and there, you can check it out. You can see the tubes. See the tubes? There's the tubes, right? So check this out. On the back here, 
This goes to an external speaker. So if I had a different speaker I wanted to use, I could plug that in right there. Or if I wanted to use a foot switch right here for the reverb, I could do that and turn the reverb on and off with that. But this right here, this is what we call an effects loop. This is where you plug in different effects like reverb and delay and different stuff like that. And it positions, positions it properly between the amplifier and your guitar and the speaker and everything and where that all happens so that it sounds the best. Now to find an effects loop on an amplifier like this is kind of unheard of because like I said, a Fender Blues Junior, which I don't believe has an effects loop, will run you six or 700 bucks. Maybe it does, it could. But this is under 300. I picked this up for like 280, right? And I've seen them on sale for even less. I think I saw on sale during Christmas for like 180 or something like that, or some some crazy ridiculous uh, discount. And I thought that was awesome. Now I have bought two of these because we bought this one for my son and then our basement got flooded and we had to clear his room out. So this ended up coming to the school and I ended up using it in class. And I liked it so much that I just kept it and bought him a new one. So they're really good little handy amps. They're not like the greatest amp in the world, but man, the value that you get for under $300 uh, to get a tube amp, to have an effects loop, to have good controls on the front, it's kind of unheard of. So would I recommend it? Yeah. Is it going to be the last amp you buy? Probably not, but it's going to it's gonna be a workout horse for you and it'll be great to play with. So that just goes to show that you don't have to break the bank to get a good sounding amp. Um, but like I said, what kind of amp you get is going to depend on what style you're playing, what kind of sounds you want to be able to get, what your favorite artists play through if you want to sound like them. You're going to have to look at different factors like that. But if you don't have a good amp, go get one. Okay. Don't go buy another guitar before you get a good amp. Okay. If you do that, it's going to transform your sound and it's going to make you sound awesome. And it's going to inspire you because when you sound cool, when you sound good, like when I play through that and I play Green Day songs and I sound like freaking Billy Joe, it's exciting for me. I think it's really cool. It lights me up inside. Or I flip over to uh, to a Mesa Boogie dual rectifier and I can play Monkey Wrench by Foo Fighters and it's just unleashed, you know, it sounds great. And so there's lots of fun stuff. Go get yourself a good amplifier and you won't regret it. Now, if you found that happy, I want you to go to my website at simpleguitar.com slash top 10, because there I have another gift for you. And it's called the top 10 things to learn on guitar first. And it's 10 things that will get you a lot of bang for your buck. In fact, one of the things that I cover in that guide is how to actually use your amp. It's one of the things I didn't know for a long time, but it made a big difference in how I sounded afterwards. So that guide will actually help you with that. So go pick that up. All you have to do is go to simpleguitar.com slash top 10, put in your email. That'll sign you up for my email list. I'll email that out to you. And then I will send you more stuff to help you with your guitar playing. And you can unsubscribe anytime you want. It's no commitment, okay? But I hope this was helpful for you. So if it was, let me know down in the comments. If you've got a favorite amp or something that you think other people should check out, let us know down in the comments as well. That would be awesome. And thanks again for watching today. I appreciate you. And thanks so much for spending your time with me. And if you want more help, go check out this next video and I will see you over there.